Welcome into Clipboard Conversations. John Foki alongside Hornets head coach James Borrego. Coming up on this episode, we'll take questions from you in our Ask JB segment. We'll, of course, look ahead. We've got a five-game homestand in the midst of it right now. It's great to be back here at Spectrum Center. And we'll kick things off, Coach, by talking about the trends. And I think one of the trends that we've seen over the last couple of weeks, seen the good and the bad of it, closing out close games and, and winning those and then having a couple get away from you. Uh, six and three, though, overall, in one possession games this season. I guess, what have you seen out of this team in late game situations, whether you come out on top or you don't? Well, we're learning, learning from it, that's for sure. Um, you know, through wins, through losses, as I said last night, we're, we're not gonna win every close game. And I don't think there's one NBA team out there doing that. So uh, I've been pleased with how our guys have been focused down the stretch. Uh, we've executed, obviously last night, we had some hiccups that uh, we corrected today and we talked through. And that's just how we're approaching the season. You know, we're going to have our highs, our lows, but we continue to get better. We come into work, uh, we watch the film, hold each other accountable, and we get better. That's that's the name of this game. So, um, I've seen a, I've seen, you know, the two Detroit games. We closed out those two very well. Mm -hmm. uh, made big shots, big stops down the stretch. Uh, obviously, last night was a little bit tougher. Um, you got to give them credit. They made shots, but there's some things that we control that that we uh, need to take care of. So. We learn from it, we grow, we get better, we move forward. And we talk about the experience of being in those moments is one of the things that this group was, is going to continue to learn is playing with the lead. You know, it's one thing to be battling back and, mm -hmm. and kind of playing free, but then it's a different thing when you've got a lead, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, for us, we're climbing up uphill for a lot of these games, but once we take the lead or we, we own the lead, we got to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. uh, va valuing the ball, executing our sets, uh, making sure we're not giving up open threes late, um, you know, not, not making mistakes as we've done, you know, at times down the stretch. Um, but I give our guys credit. They're battling um, every single night. We're in games uh, other than a few I can think of this season. We've been right there. And I expect it to come down the wire. Like every night it's going to be this. <laughs> this is who we are. This is our team. Um, so get used to it. Get used to it. And we'll get better through it. Uh, we are deep in the fire right now. Um, and these are the situations you want for young guys to grow in these moments, uh, to have this experience right now. There's going to be some pain through it. There's going to be some joy through it. But ultimately, we learn, we grow, we develop. We will be better for it in the end. Yeah, already 14 clutch time games. And we're only, what, 22 games <laughs> into the season. It's really incredible. Uh, what a luxury for you guys to be able to go to the bench and bring in a player like Marvin. Yeah. And I know we've talked about his leadership, but man, there's some games where he comes out there and, and gives you such a spark offensively, defensively. Just what a luxury to have a player like that. Luxury. I mean, just a luxury. A guy that has great pride in his work. Uh, knows the game, great competitor, great teammate, gives us everything he has every night. And um, obviously he had a great impact in last night's game and um, his teammates love him. But what a great luxury just to have in the locker room. Forget him on the court, just to have him in the locker room, his presence, his leadership. That's the number one thing for me. And then what he's doing right now on the floor, just to come in with that energy, that juice, that fire. Um, I hope it's rubbing off on our young guys. If they're not watching Marvin Williams every night, they're missing out. And they need to learn and take that from him. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. I don't because um, he's a special human being, special player, and obviously I'm, I'm thrilled to have him. Season high 22 on Monday against Phoenix. We saw him get switched on to a small guy a couple of times and immediately take him in the post. Yep. We've seen PJ do that. Uh, how pleased are you with the way this team is recognizing those mismatches and then trying to make sure that they get the ball there and, and exploit those? Yeah, we've done it a number of these games. Um, you know, when teams are switching us, and Phoenix did it a lot last night to us. There was another game, the Chicago game, they were switching a lot. Uh, New York, and we executed, you know, mm -hmm. through the post. So we've got a number of those guys, as you said. I think Marvin's one, PJ's one. If they're going to switch us, we got to exploit that in the, in the post. And we're doing a much better job of that. I think last night, second half especially. First half, not so good. Second half, uh, we cleaned that up. We got deep in the post. Marvin made plays down there, PJ a, a few times. Uh, we got to keep exploiting that matchup. Can, can't allow teams just to take us out of our offense uh, when they switch. Terry Rozier, 56% shooting from beyond the arc over his last six games. So this has extended uh, for about two weeks now. What have you seen from him in a comfort level or finding his spots, guys knowing where he likes it from that three-point shot? Yeah, I think he's getting more comfortable in our system, knowing where to go, playing off the ball at times. 
Um, I, want, I want him to catch and shoot. He's one of the elite, as I look at his numbers, one of the elite catch and shoot three-point shooters right now in all the NBA. So when he has an open look, knock it down, shoot it with confidence. Hopefully he knows, and I think he knows that he has a green light right there. I want him to take that thing with confidence, shoot the ball. Uh, when he has the attack, keep attacking. But uh, he's, he's been very good shooting the ball right now. And I think it is the comfort, just being his teammates know where he's at. He understands our system at a higher level right now. I expect those shots to only get better and better for him. And whether it's shooting or driving, it seems like for the last two weeks, no hesitation with him. He, he gets that ball and knows what he wants Yeah, much to more do. decisive. Mm -hmm. I think early on, he was a little bit indecisive, when to attack, when to hold, when to play one-on-one, -on -one, when to kick it. And I feel he's just much more uh, decisive right now. Attacking the rim, shooting the ball, making the extra pass. Uh, very, very pleased with his development and growth so far. All right, it's been fun to watch this team, and we got a number of opportunities as we are in the midst of a five-game homestand. We'll talk more about that coming up in our final segment. But coming up next, we take your questions. It's Ask JB right here on Clipboard Conversations. Time for our Ask JB segment. We put it out to you fans to get your thoughts on, on what to ask Coach JB. We've had some great ones. We appreciate it. Be sure to follow the Hornets across all their social media channels. We do this once a week, and we get the questions from you. we got a lot of basketball questions. Fantastic. Not, not like a ton of fun stuff. Like, <laughs> like in there is more, there's more to this, this deal <laughs> than, than basketball, right? There's a big life and world out there. But, <laughs> but we do have basketball. Right. I understand our fans want to hear basketball. So Let's start with this one from Lloyd D. Robinson. Uh, I thought this one was interesting. Is the team ahead, behind, or meeting your expectations at this point in the season? Again, I didn't really, you know, I'm not trying to brush the question off, but I didn't go into the, the season with expectations on, you know, where we're at, how we're doing. It's just about what we're doing every day, just mm -hmm. trying to get better, hitting those pillars every day. And what has exceeded my expectation is their growth and development so far, that they are growing together. Uh, we're further along in our development um, than, than I expected at this point, but um, you know, I give our guys a lot of credit. They're hitting the pillars right now. We are competing, number one. Our players are getting better in general. All our players are getting better. And then we're, we have an identity out there. You think you watch our group on a night-to-night -night basis, you go, I, I'm starting to understand who the Hornets are in general. And we're hitting those pillars every day. So. Um, to me, that's what I, that's my mindset. Mm -hmm. I wasn't saying we have to have X amount of wins. Um, that's never been my thought process going into the season. Obviously, we're trying to win every game. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased more than anything with their development, their attention to detail, uh, how they're pulling for each other, how they're moving the ball and you know how we're trying to compete on a night-to-night -night basis. And as far as that attention to detail, it's, it's little things from, like we were just talking about, recognizing a mismatch, yeah. and then getting to the right angle, right, to yeah. make that entry pass. It's, it's little things like that. It's little things, and, and I think, you know, as young guys, they take all that for granted, but when you get to this stage, this level of competition, these type of athletes, these type of uh, coaching staffs, when they're trying to take away, you know, a few of our wrinkles, you have to have another counter. And mm -hmm. those are the fine details you're talking about. What's my counter? They do this, I do that. They do X, I do Y. And you gotta have those type of counters along the way. And every game we learn and we grow. And so we come in the next day, we watch it, we show it, we teach it, we drill it, and we get better. Here's one from James Warren 07. Can we start Bismore? Can we start Bismore? Yes. Biz is started. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been there four, four games in a row. Uh, so James, James wants more Biz. What, what Biz, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Biz is doing great. I mean, he's starting right now. He gives us a lot of rim protection. Um, obviously, our defense is a work in progress. It's, you know, it's something that we have to improve on. Biz gives us presence at the rim, uh, energy, physicality early to start games. Um, he had a good stretch there with Cody out. He got the nod, and we've stuck with him. Where this goes, I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know I, it's very fluid right now. We could go back to Cody and Biz. I like them both. Uh, both provide us uh, a spark in different ways. Um, but right now we're going to ride with Biz, um, and you know we'll see how long that goes. But both guys I believe in, I trust them, and uh, Biz is starting. <laughs> and we talk about the luxury of having a player like Marvin, but just with your two centers too, two guys that sort of understand, hey, this is about the team. And you know, Cody said after practice today, if I've got to come off the bench, I'm ready to do that. And Biz understands, you know, both these guys look team first and, and understand kind of the situation. I have a great group of vets, as I keep saying. They, they are about team first. It's not easy. 
Um, but I'm asking them to do what's best for this team. And right now, we have Biz in the starting lineup. Uh, Biz has come in coming off the bench for you know the last year for the most part, mm -hmm. and now you know we're asking him to start. So um, yeah, it's a it's a luxury to have guys that go whatever you need, coach. I'm in. I bought in. Whatever you need from me, night to night, no whining, no crying. Let's go get a win. And we'll wrap up with this one from Patrick Connor. Uh, can you play PJ Miles, Monk, Terry, and Devonte Graham more together? Okay, can you give it to me again? <laughs> <laughs> P.J. Miles, yeah. Malik, Terry, and Devontae, that five. Yeah, it's something we could look at. It's a young group. Um, it's a dynamic group. Uh, yes, we could. I mean, there's, uh, it makes it tough on, you know, rotation-wise. But, yeah, that's the lineup we could look at. And I don't think we've seen it a whole lot this year so far. But um, it's something we'll look at. All right, so there you go. We appreciate all your questions. Next time, let's get some non-basketball ones. We've got to grill JB a little bit. Uh, follow the Hornets across all their social media channels. We'll be sourcing your questions throughout the week. When we come back, we take a look ahead. The Hornets' five-game homestand continues. The Warriors, the Nets, the Hawks, and the Wizards. We'll talk about that next. Final segment here, we take a look ahead. The five-game homestand continues. And, Coach, you and I talked before Monday's game kind of about the opportunity here of being at home and getting a chance to practice, to have some shoot-arounds. I guess with, these, uh, with this about 10-day stretch, how important is it to take advantage of, of maybe correcting some habits, building some habits, and just being at home and not having to hop on a plane after every game? Yeah, no, this is a big stretch for us uh, where we can grow, develop, uh, use this time to practice, you know, be in our own gym, our own beds, getting proper rest. Because uh, part of this thing is to keep our guys motivated and, and developing, you need that proper rest mm -hmm. for the mind, for the body. So being in our own beds, making sure we're getting the proper rest, and then coming into practice every day, you know, like today after, after our game last night, to come in, watch film, and then go apply it on the court and execute it, that's where you see growth and development. And, you know, we'll have another game tomorrow night. We'll come in the next day and, and uh, get back at it. So this is an important stretch for us. Obviously, the games are extremely important. That's the number one priority. But, at, but then also having practice time, video time to address it, talk about it, execute it. Uh, this is a big stretch. We've reached about, well, probably past the quarter pole of the season. What have we learned about this team that maybe you had questions about or didn't know going into this season? Well, I think we're learning a lot. I mean, you know, Devontae, we've learned a lot about. Um, I think he, playing he and Terry together, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's probably new for me. And going into the season, I didn't expect that as much. So we've learned uh, about those two guys playing on and off the ball together. That's been um, a nice surprise. And I think they're starting to form a nice, you know, duo back there uh, together. So that's been a positive. I think our depth. I think we got more depth than I expected, mm -hmm. and um, I think our guys are coming in off the bench with great energy, great purpose, and you know I think back to your earlier question, the, these end of game situations. Right? I just I think these are important moments for us that all these games are coming down to the wire. Uh, it's great for our, our young guys to grow and develop through, um, and I think we got just got to keep playing through it. You know, there's this is a tough stretch for us, but um, our guys want to get better. They're coming in to learn every day in practice. And they're a very um, curious team. I think that's the one thing I've learned from them. They're very curious. They want to know why we're doing things, mm -hmm. which I like. You, you, you need to know the why. So coming in, asking the questions, and then going out and executing it, that's been a, a pleasant surprise from this group. I've heard other coaches in the past of teams that I've covered, they called their teams problem-solving teams. Mm -hmm. uh, very like high basketball IQ yep. players. Is that sort of what you're seeing here? Maybe that this is, is a team that could develop into a, a problem-solving team? I think so. Um, and it starts on that end. It's the curiosity. I don't want guys that just, just tell me what to do, coach, and I'll go execute it. Mm -hmm. To me, the ones that are the problem solvers are the guys that want to understand why. They, they, they want, in the flow of basketball, they, they want to be able to understand reads. Why are we making adjustments? Why are we running this play? You know, why are we in this coverage? And with that comes basketball IQ. You know, you're just learning and developing. And when you start asking why, which I think our guys are starting to do, it does raise your level of basketball IQ. And I don't want to coach a team that, whatever coach, you know, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. There's a part of that that is true. But ultimately, I want them to understand 
why we are playing the way we are, why we win, why we lose, why we're in a coverage and not a different one. And once you start doing that, you start raising your level of IQ around your basketball program. And I think so far we've done that this year. All right, we'll wrap up. We've got the brand new City Edition uniforms right behind us. Uh, the Cool Grays will make their debut this Friday against the Brooklyn Nets. First off, your thoughts on these uniforms, and second, how much are you going to color coordinate to match the uniforms <laughs> like the players do with their sneakers? Big time, big time uniforms. Love the color scheme. Um, I like the CHA. I mean, it's, it's, it's bold, it's bright. Love the colors. I think we're going to look good on Friday night. Um, Will I, will I add, I don't know, maybe I got a, <laughs> a gray suit, gray purple, scoot, tie? purple tie. You can I, make that I can happen. get in the game with the guys for sure. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> maybe uh, I'll wear some sneakers too. <laughs> yeah, these ones behind me, that's the ones you got to match your suit to. Those uh, teal with the purple and the gray. That's right. Uh, we are looking forward to it. Coach, appreciate your Thank time. You. Head Good coach James Borrego, this is Clipboard Conversations. We'll talk to you again next week right here on Hornets.com.